Okay guys, so the last video um, I covered how to wedge up clay when you have pieces that you have just made but you don't like and you want to reuse the clay. Um, but how do you reuse clay if it's already dried out? Well, it's actually really easy. In this video, I want to cover how you can reclaim clay at home, but towards the end of the video, I will show you how we adapt it to, to a studio setting. So, brief vocab word here first before we start. Reclaiming clay is simply the process of recycling the clay. So, changing the clay from completely dried out so that we can reuse the clay. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this is only possible when the clay has not yet gone into the kiln, so it's not yet been fired. This is still called greenware, so all that is different between this and the clay that's in the bag is this clay has dried out. So it's unfortunately not possible to recycle the clay that's already been fired, and that's because it's changed chemically, versus all that's happened here is that it's dried out. So we just need to add water. So step number one, you want to gather up all of your dry clay into a jar um, or a bucket or whatever you have handy, something that will contain it all, but uh, leave a little bit of extra room for water as well. Now, this part is a little bit controversial, but I always encourage people to only start reclaiming clay when it is completely dry. Now, as I said, this is a little bit controversial. Some potters definitely reclaim clay when it's still wet. I'm going to link to a Simon Leach video uh, down below, which is what actually convinced me that this is the way to go and this is what I encourage you to do. So if you have your clay is still wet, it's fine. Just gather it up in a jar, set it on the shelf for a week or whatever, and uh, let it dry out completely. So step number two is to break your clay into small pieces. So I've already done this step. This is perfectly fine. What's important here is that the clay is not too thick in any direction, right? So it's okay if it's a large piece, but it's very thin. But what you definitely don't want is a ball of clay. Not only is that going to take forever to dry out, but when you reclaim the clay, it's going to end up being very lumpy. So it's really not, it's, it's not a way to do it. So you can prepare ahead by actually, when the clay is still wet and you know that you're probably going to end up reclaiming it, just squishing it as flat as you can, chucking it in the jar and letting it dry out there. So one important thing to know is that when you're breaking your uh, clay down into smaller pieces, be careful that you're not generating a large amount of dust. Don't forget that clay dust is toxic for your lungs, so you don't want to be breathing that in as much as you can. Okay, step number three is add water or slip. So if you have slip, you want to be using that. But when usually when people are hand building, they don't actually make a lot of slip. So in that case, we're going to be using water. When you work on the wheel, that's more of when you're making slip. So we actually have a lot of slip that we go through in the studio for the recycling. I will show you that later. But um, if you're not making slip, absolutely fine. Just use water. So we're going to fill it up. Try and get these pieces as slow as possible. I don't want to add too much water. So we're going to just fill it up just to the top. So it's okay if a few pieces are still sticking out. Um, what we want is not too much water, but you do want all of the pieces in contact with the water so they can start kind of dissolving. See these bubbles? And you can start seeing the clay falling apart. That's what we want. Also, you can definitely hear it squeaking and squishing and all these great sounds that it's going to make. Um, what that is, is all the air pockets in the clay is now filling up with water and so the air is escaping, just like if you were fermenting. Can you hear that? It sounds like something's digesting. <laughs> Okay, step number four is to let it 
chill. Let this sit for at least two hours. If after two hours it's looking like it's completely starting to fall apart, you can start mixing it up then. Otherwise, just set it for a day. Take care of it tomorrow. There's no time pressure on this. So you can even have it sit here for a week or more. So um, just let it chill out. Okay, so we have our uh, clay reclaim here. So you can see it's completely broken down. We have a little bit of extra water on top here. So I'm actually going to pour that off. We don't need that. So just pouring that off. What we want is this goopy, thick stuff here. So this here is actually called slip. Now you can use this for uh, slipping and scoring, the process of attaching two pieces of clay together. Um, instead of reconstituting this as clay, you can actually use it as it is. Um, definitely check out my video on slipping and scoring where I will explain that whole process. But so this is basically the slip that we use in slipping and scoring. Um, now this clay water here, um, just a little bit like this is fine to pour down your drain, but if you end up having a lot of it, uh, you do wanna let this sit overnight so that the clay particles can sink down to the bottom, pour off the top, and then when the clay is a little bit thicker on the bottom, just throw that away in the trash. Uh, you don't wanna be putting too much clay down your drain. Just a small amount like this is not gonna do any harm though. Okay, I decided to do my reclaiming up on the windowsill here. Not only is it a place that's kind of out of the way, but it's also right next to our heater. So it will help the clay to dry even faster. So what I've got here set up is a large Tupperware container. Um, this is just what we had. You don't need this so long as you have thick enough towel here, but um, if you have this, it's extra backup in case the water does leak. Um, you can also use a tray or a plate, something that will help contain the water. Will be an extra security measure, although it's not that necessary. And then I folded up a towel inside here, so this will help to absorb the water. And then on top, I've put a tea towel. And the reason I'm using this is because it's got a very flat um, grain here. So it's just a nice piece of fabric um, because if you put the reclaim directly on the towel, it's gonna get stuck in all of these uh, fabrics here. So I just wanna put a really flat, clean piece of fabric that is going to be the part that is in contact with the clay. So I've got my spoon and I'm just gonna pour this out into the tea towel. So here we go. I'm just gonna flatten this out. It's really not that much but definitely it's enough to uh, make use of. Uh, you can definitely make a cup or something small out of this amount of clay. I think it will take about a day to let this dry out to about wedging consistency, um, but I definitely recommend just keeping an eye on it, check it. Um, if you feel like you can uh, move it around, kind of scoop it up, um, lay it down again, that's great. You can see it's already starting to pull the water from the clay and I guess it's getting a little wet down there as well. So just let it sit and dry. Okay, so this has been drying out for a couple of days now. Um, basically it's, I still feel there's wetness in here, but um, it's quite dry to the touch. Actually, I can just peel this off. I thought I was gonna have to use a spoon or a rib to remove it but if you can just remove it like that that's awesome so now it's as you can see it's pretty dry I'm just like able to touch it without the much clay coming off on my fingers 
And now I'm just going to wedge the clay. So if you don't know how to wedge, I also have a video about wedging. So I'm not going to explain it all here, but basically we're just mixing the clay together now. And then we have perfectly finished, ready to reuse clay, just like that. So this can be used for anything that we would use the original clay for. So there you go. And because I've been filming all these other videos for you, I'm collecting the next round of uh, reclaimed scraps over here in the corner. So you can see I've broken them down as much as I can and I'm just kind of letting them dry out next to the heater. Well, hi guys, welcome to my studio. Um, here we are. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how we wedge in the studio. So the first step is to collect the slip. Now here we are in the sink area where we have the tools and everything. And next to the sink, we have the slip. And anytime we generate uh, too much slip that we just don't need, we throw it in here. So this normally comes from throwing on the wheel. You generate a lot of slip from throwing on the wheel. Um, and you can see here, I just arrived this morning and there's definitely a layer of water on the top. And what I'll do in that case is just pour off that water. So what results is that very, very thick slip. And with that, I will show you what we do next. So over here by the wheels is another bucket. And this is the dry clay bucket. So you can see here, we collect all of the dry clay. So there's a lot of trimmings in here from throwing and then some random bits and pieces. So just like when we're recycling at home, you want to break them into smaller pieces. Um, these are a little bit big, but uh, maybe someone had an accident here and threw some bigger pieces in, but that's gonna be okay. We'll work on those. So here we are in the kiln room. It's very warm in here. And this is where we dry out the dry stuff. So we want it to be really dry before we do anything with it. So these are just sitting in some shallow trays and I'll mix it up. If I have a really thick chunk that didn't get flattened out, maybe I'll put it on top of a kiln even to dry out. Um, but this is all looking fine. So you can see this was a larger piece that someone squished down to make it flat. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So this is the last bucket and this is where we're mixing the two together actually. So um, what I did here was I poured the dry clay bits in here and then I poured the slip on top of it. And when you dry out the clay completely, you don't actually need to mix this until you're ready to let it dry. So this, because the clay was so dry, it just soaked the slip right up and it's this really lovely goop stuff. So I will show you what we do next. So here I have my plaster bats that I made. Plaster, this specific kind of plaster absorbs water um, without absorbing the clay into it, which makes it ideal for this type of process. So I will just grab my clay and squish it down into the bat. All right, so I've managed to empty out my buckets and fill with these two plaster mats. Now, they will sit for a couple of days now. I will at some point flip them over, let the other side dry out, and um, then all you need to do is just wedge them up and uh, it becomes like fresh clay again. So this is how we do recycling in the studio. You absolutely don't need to be doing it like this at home. I just wanted to show you kind of the larger scale version. Keep in mind that everyone does reclaim their clay a little bit different. The reason I like to do it this way is it requires the least amount of labor. 
So by letting the clay dry out completely, you don't need to use any of these mixing machines or you don't need to be wedging the clay so much. Um, it just helps cut down on the labor that you have to do and also on the wear and tear of the studio on your body. Um, you always want to be keeping in mind that uh, this is very physical work and you want to be taking care of your body as well. All right, that's it for the day. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. I think the next video will be uh, making a slab cup, which should be pretty interesting. So stay tuned. Do let me know if you want to see more of these kind of behind the scenes of how the studio works, because there's a lot going behind the, on behind the scenes to keep the space running and uh, I'm very happy to share it with you. But let me know because it might be boring, so maybe you have no interest in seeing. I have no idea. <laughs> Alright, bye guys.